Hi. Now in this video, what I want to do is to introduce you to domain and range of functions. I've got four examples that I'm going to run through here, and they each have got different points about them. And there's also another video that follows this one in this series, where I just take this a little bit further. So hopefully if you get something from this video, you'll carry on and look at the next video. Okay, so when it comes to working out domain range of functions, what you've got to be familiar with is the graph of the function. I don't believe that you can really do this without any knowledge of the graphs. So let's look at this first one here. We've got f of x equaling 2x minus 1, where x is defined between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. So if we were to draw this graph, set up our axes, okay, let's say we have y is equal to f of x, then you should recognize this graph as being that of a straight line. It has the form mx plus c. In other words, a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 1. Now when it comes to sketching this line, what I'm going to do though is take the two endpoints because that's quite important as you'll see. If I work out f of negative 1 first of all, okay, so we've got f of negative 1, then we're going to have 2 times minus 1 which is minus 2 minus another one that's going to be minus 3. And if we take this endpoint when x is 1, then f of 1 will be 2 times 1 which is 2, minus another 1, that's just going to give me 1. So if I was to mark in those points on the graph, we've got this one down here, when x is minus 1, this comes out at minus 3, and when x is 1, this one comes out at 1. It's not really drawn accurately, but hopefully you get the picture. And that is, it's a straight line, so if I join those two points up, we've got that graph there. So what do we mean then when it comes to the domain of the function? Well, the domain is the values of x that this graph is defined for. And we can see that those values of x go between minus 1 to 1 inclusive. So in this example, the domain then, let's just put that in, the domain is that set of values of x. That is, x goes between minus 1 and 1, and it can actually equal those values. And when it comes to the range, what do we mean by the range of the function? Well, the range is the span of y values for all the values of x that we have in the domain. So you can see that our y values, or f of x values in this case, go from minus 3 all the way up to 1. Put any x value in between minus 1 and 1 here, and you'll always get an output of any y value or f of x value greater than or equal to minus 3, but less than or equal to 1. So that's our range. So if we put that in, we've got minus 3 is that lower value. f of x can be greater than or equal to that value, but less than or equal to 1. OK, that upper value here. So that's that one. Now, what happens if we take the same function f of x to equaling 2x minus 1 again? Only this time, we don't restrict the domain. We just think of what this graph would look like if we had an unrestricted domain. Well, again, if we draw our axis on and we draw our graph on, our graph is not really going to look just like this. It's not really going to stop here and here. It's going to carry on because we can keep substituting values of x greater than 1 that we had here, in fact we can go on forever and ever to infinity. And we can go in this direction forever and ever. 
all the way out to minus infinity. And consequently, this graph is just going to carry on upwards like this, OK, and downwards in this direction. Well, I'm not going to write the dotted lines in. I'm just going to put some arrows on here just to show that it would carry on down here and it would carry on in that direction upwards, OK? So what does this mean then when it comes to our domain? So when we have the domain, what are we going to be having? Well, it's unrestricted. We can have any value of x that you like here. So we say that x is any real number. OK, and we use this notation. Or you can say that x is a member of the set of real numbers. All right. Now, when it comes to the range, what have we got for the range? Well, for the range, our y values, f of x values, can turn out to be anything that is greater than or equal to 0 or less than 0. In fact, f of x will be any real number. So our range will be written as f of x is any real number. So let's have a look at a different kind of function now. g of x equals x squared. If we take the graph of g of x equals x squared, you should be familiar with that one. It looks like this. It's a parabola going through the origin. When x is 0, you could, would get 0. And as x increases in this direction, for all your values of positive x, if you square them, they start to go up like this. And if you square any negative value, it goes up like this. It's symmetrical, in fact, about the y-axis. So when it comes to working out what the domain is for this one, what do you think it will be? Well, this graph is going to carry on out in this direction. It's defined for all values of x. You can substitute all positive values of x into here and square them. And the same applies to all negative values and x equals 0. So in other words, this is defined for x values that are all real numbers. And what do you think it is for the range? Well, this graph is going to carry on up like this forever and ever. And on this side, it's going to carry on up like that forever and ever. I'll put some arrows on here just to signify that that's what's going to be happening. So our range then is going to be from this lowest point here, and it's going to carry on upwards. So our function is g of x this time, not f of x, so it's g of x. And we're going to have all values that are greater than or equal to 0. We'll never have any negative values down here. OK? Right, now in this example, this is a very important example, what I've done is I'm going to take the same graph, but I'm going to restrict the domain. So if we were to copy that graph, it's going to look something like this when we restrict the domain. If I was to work out what this y value is, y being g of x, then I would need to do g of negative 1. And if you do g of negative 1, you square negative 1, you're going to get 1. So therefore, this point here is going to be at 1. And likewise, if I do g of 3 to work out what the corresponding y value for that would be, g of 3 would be 3 squared, which is 9. And so I'll put the 9 in here. Now, this is a very important example because our domain is restricted. But can you see that? When x is negative 1, you're actually going to get 1. 
So what I'm going to do is put a solid dot there. But when x is 3, you're going to get 9. But remember, x is not really 3, it's just less than 3. So in other words, your values will be less than 9. So what I'm going to do is just an open circle there, okay? Now, let's just put down our domain. So the domain, I'm sure you should be able to guess what this is. It's going to be this set of values of x here. That is, x is greater than or equal to negative 1, but less than 3. Now when it comes to the range, we've got to take a lot more care here. And again, this is why it's important to be familiar with the graphs. g of x does not go from the 1 here to the 9. g of x goes from this lowest point here, and it can take all y values from 0 all the way up to 9. And that's where you've got to be very careful in this one. So g of x is actually going from 0. It can be greater than or equal to 0. But it will never equal 9. It will be less than 9. OK, so this is an important example. I've included that to hopefully demonstrate that point, that you don't go from the y values that you necessarily get at the two extreme points here, which would give 1 and 9. No, you've got to go from your lowest point on the graph to your highest point. And that gives us this range for this example. Now, hopefully this has been of some help to you. But what I would encourage you to do is take a look at the next video in this series. I'm going to be looking at some other functions which are going to throw up some other important points that you should be aware of. So hopefully you'll take a look at that. So for the moment, thanks for watching. Hopefully then see you in the next video.